Welcome back, everybody, to Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and join with me today, as always, my co-host, Chris. Hey, guys, what's happening? What's going on, man? Uh, and we're here today to talk about another exciting week of comics. We're actually talking about the new comics for the week of April 27th, 2022. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, everybody. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up if you like what you saw here today. Continue the conversation with us in the comments. If there's something you wanted to talk about that you read this week or, you know, wanted to comment on what we said about these books. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, but first and foremost, I always got to give out uh, this spoiler warning for you guys, because if you know, to get into some of the reviews of the books that we will be talking about today on the show, sometimes we do got to spoil what happened in the books to kind of get into the conversation of them. Um, you know, there's always show notes along with the episodes. If you kind of want to skip certain segments, if you haven't read your books yet, read them and then come back and listen. Um, you know, so we always put that to make it useful for you guys. And, uh, yeah, you know, we try to, we try to stay away from the big ones if we can, uh, you know, we're mindful of that as much as we can be, uh, without further ado though, Chris. All right. It's a big week and now uh, let's talk comics. Let's talk comics. All right. Absolutely. And first up today, we got dark Knights of steel number six two as well. All right, Chris, what'd you think of this one? All right. I think, uh, the series keeps its momentum going in this one. Got a few new pieces added to the to the board. I don't think there's many earth shattering reveals in this one, but uh, I don't know if it's a spoiler that Ra's al Ghul shows up and him mentioning the Titans was uh, like there's nothing about that, but I just thought that was interesting. And then uh, the meeting with Superman and Lois could lead to something, you know, like they're an iconic couple, and although they don't seem to know each other here, but I imagine something's going to come forward to that. And I'm looking forward to more of this still. Yeah, man. I, I, as you know, I love this world. I love the direction of the story. As you mentioned, it's not like it wasn't as like a blockbuster of a moment issue as the one, you know, a couple of issues previous to this one, number four, I think it was, where we gave it both favor of the week. And then it kind of explained a little bit more about uh, the Kents in that last issue, right? Yeah. Uh, this issue saw the return of the main artist on the series, who is the far superior artist, I think, out of the two, uh, that person that kind of just did that fill in issue last one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I love the direction of the story of this. I, I, I love all the little, the alliances, the deceptions, the action. I love how like the little twists, the little minor changes they make to the world with these characters. Like you said, the Ra's al Ghul thing. It's not just Ra's al Ghul, Chris. He's Etrigan the demon. Like, I, yeah, I, that's, that's that, it too. That's crazy. And, and, and like just seeing when the demon come out and then, okay, that's great. And then goes, I don't want to talk to the demon. I want to talk to whatever he wants to call you. Know, I think the monkey's coming or something. Yeah. And it's freaking Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. So that's, so yeah, John Constantine, of course. And he writes a great John Constantine, Tom Taylor in this as well. I thought, you know, he's pissed drunk when they find him, which is a very John Constantine kind of thing. But like this moment was great because if you know anything about Ra's al Ghul, like he was referred, he is referred to as the demon. And the fact that they took that bit and actually made him instead of Jason Blood, the actual uh, Etrigan, the demon, uh, because he fused himself with the with the demon. They say, and they're like, I'm like, that's awesome. Like, just like little things like that. Like, they're taking already pre-established information or traits of these characters and twisting them just slightly, less like they did with the Joker thing or whatever, Green Lantern or Green Arrow, yeah. remember that whole thing, right? Which they haven't really even revisited since they kind of mentioned it the first time. But that wasn't really what we thought it was. Like everything that you think you kind of understand oh look it's just like a, a fantasy based version of this character i'm like yes but you know yeah, no it's, this is great i love this <laughs> yeah i just i'd love just spending <clears throat> time in this world that they've established and and like honestly this is six the sixth issue out of 12 i hope that they do more i hope that they do more than this i hope that they do more mini series of this yeah like, you know if they took a break and there's a dark knight to steal too you know the building on whatever they do here i'm down for it yeah yeah so yeah it's really that's all i gotta say on it i just i just i i this is probably one of the like always almost at the top of my stack of every week or at the top of my stack that yeah it's the first comic i read yeah and i know uh, the big stack this week too with some big names there's only one that actually beat this one i think actually that was at the top of my stack which we'll talk about later but um but yeah it was the second thing i read this week and i always have so much fun reading this book so yeah um what'd you give it chris yeah four no problem Oh, I'm giving it a five. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the five one I gave for the <laughs> that the, the the big swerve with Superman stabbing Batman. I you know that's I couldn't give this a five, but I it's know still that, great though. It's great. I know not as big of moments happened if I'm going to compare this issue to that one, but I think everything that came before this issue that's been pre like that's been building and building. Like every time I revisit it now. Like this, I hadn't really no complaints about this particular issue, yeah, man. Like, yeah, so, so that's why I'm like, okay, I'm giving it a five. I just, it, it's just the feeling I get when I kind of revisit this world every time, right? I'm just like, yeah, I love, I love this story. So, yeah, it's one of my favorite things coming out right now. So, all right. Speaking of something that wasn't my yeah, favorite, speaking of going from our favorites, <laughs> yeah, but Justice League 75. That acetate cover or whatever the hell you call it there. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, you need oh, I didn't even know it did that. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. You didn't know that? <laughs> did you not no. know? <laughs> I guess you didn't separate it. Yeah, that's well, I opened it up and I just thought I got my fingerprints all over that the front cover. <laughs> I'm trying to freaking wipe the smudges off. Yeah, so that's the that's the image underneath of them falling to their deaths. <laughs> that's it. You know, I'll I'll start out with the it's a great A cover, that's for sure. Oh, here I got a. Let's see. Hold on a second. I got a. I got a variant cover too. Where did I oh, put? Oh yeah, show that off for sure. Oh, there it is. The one with them all of them, all of them in their coffin. Oh, let me see that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's when you're gonna get covered with all the men in coffins again. I don't like know. The death of Superman kind of cover right there, but it's with all of the, that's cool. The Trinity. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That is cool. Uh, but yeah, why don't you why don't you talk about this, Chris? I'll <laughs> well, start up with the good stuff. Yeah. The cover. Yeah. That's about it. I I know they've been building this story and other issues. I think I've read some of them, like in that Justice League Incarnate. Yes. But for this series, this just comes out of nowhere. You know, like what they all just popped out of their, yeah, like that page there. They're all just kind of living their life. It spoils action comics, of course, because now, because Superman is, they pluck him orbiting War World. Yeah. Unless they're trying to say this happened before all the World War World stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know this pariah character, and he just wipes him out like nothing. And, Come on, it's, come on, give me a break with that. I don't know about that. I didn't, uh, you know, yeah. I don't want to go on this ride, but uh, I think I'm stuck on this train. I'm getting the next few issues at least because I think I got them on uh, of Dark Crisis. pre orders. Yeah. Crisis? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, unless that stuff really goes through the rails, I'm not I'm like, you know, I'm putting my July orders in. I don't know if I'll be ordering this stuff. I think I've pre ordered the first issue of Dark Crisis so far, and I don't know how much farther I'm going to go further than that i really but but so I, that's what i was gonna ask you chris because i remember you talking about justice league incarnate on the show i believe it was also written by joshua williamson who wrote this and i believe um when you were talking about that series my only knowledge of that going into this is kind of was was based on what you had mentioned about the series and then they do show up in this book and then i was like okay this the great darkness thing i believe chris had referred to that that actually yeah. happened in that other book and you're right if you weren't really following everything that was going on like maybe leading into this someone could pick this up and be a little bit confused as to like you know why all this is happening but like, yeah like if you're just reading justice league you know the last issue i forget what it was about but this comes in boom yeah <laughs> it wasn't even the right same writer he left at that last story arc that he did and then williamson came in to do this to set up dark crisis essentially this is a prelude in the last issue of a series which you know uh spoilers this 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 you know this false advertising on the cover here <laughs> like they don't <laughs> die like i mean like it looks like the trinity is in trouble i'll give you that but like it's so it, fe it felt so boring and predictable reading yeah. this book, chris i mean like then it was just like oh now the dark versions of villains have showed up and now it's like now yeah what we're doing and it's like a crisis right everybody like we've dealt with crises before like it just felt like I don't know. It just it, it, the build up for me, which there was none in this single issue, because it was kind of like we were just thrown into it. Yeah, the issue seems to be good until uh, what's that? Green Arrow says, "Oh, let's go home for chili or something." They get turn the page and pow. Yeah. Like I saw some spoiler panels of this where you know, like where they're all kind of get turned to dust. 
And when I was reading, I hope this isn't what's happening. And then sure enough, it's, it's what happens. It was fine. I mean, it wasn't like, I don't think it was horrible, but it wasn't anything special. Yeah. There's the dark army right there. It's basically. Yeah. Like that stuff's okay, but. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, um, it was, there was enough action to go around, but like, it just seems like DC for the last few years has literally just been folding one book and event into another event. And it never ends. Like this is like, yeah. the, and like, like you said, it just went from the justice league incarnate continuing that story into the end of the justice league into their summer event. And then what's going to happen in the summer event? There's going to be like, it's going to fold itself into something else. Probably <laughs> like, it's not like there's no, this is what happened. Now let's like go from here and tell interesting stories. It's just like one thing after, yeah. another, after another. Yeah. Like I imagine the fall event is going to be the return of the justice league. Probably, like, you know, or maybe that's going to be their summer event. Who knows? Like, I don't know, man. It just, it, but, just but, it just felt uninspired. Like, you know, it's fine. It was fine. I mean, if it's like if you read any event or anything like Justice League related over the last few years, though, it was not very much different from anything, really. That, that I, yeah. I know. Just, I just figured for the Justice League, for the death of the Justice League, they put in some more. I'm tired of panels like that, too. That's another thing that's starting to bug me, those circle panels with everything coming out. This just means to... way too often in every comic. And then you don't know like which way to go. Like you're yeah, well, you read around the circle, and it doesn't really mean anything. And then the the middle panel, which should be the big one, gets messed up because it's it's cut in half by the by the split page. You know, you gotta have, like spread your copy down. Well, that's another story. Yeah. But like I say, what I was talking about is you know they this was such a big event. You know, the death of the Justice League. You think they put some more effort into the story or a bigger build up? You know, at least you know I think they're trying to play off the death of Superman. But yet all those doomsday issues before all that, like that was a big deal. And, you know, he died in a, in a, tr you know, a true death sort of way, not just getting freaking wiped out by a magic spell or something. Well, well that's what I mean. I think I it, like, that's what I mean. There's no buildup of the storyline to get to the, like, there's no like iconic moment. There's no like, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. They're just kind of just throwing shit out there. It seems like for this, right? Like to your point, like there was a lot of buildup that went into that 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 story, at least, right? Like, it yeah, was, like this. But is you know, Doomsday was a new character. You know, he had a lot of freaking, you know, he had a lot of swag behind him coming into this. But this, you know, it's not like oh, some guy that's you know they've bested the league before and he's finally got the upper hand. Like I don't know who this pariah guy is, and he comes up with some power out of nowhere just to turn everybody to dust. Nah. I two. That's what I give it. Two. Wow. I will say the art was good. I yeah, they were great. I like the art. That's for sure. I'm gonna give it a two point five for the. Oh. Art. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't saying wow because I was gonna give it a high rating, but I was just like, yeah, I'll give it two point five for the art. I like the art. I like the art. Yeah, I do like the art. It's good. The art is good stuff, but yeah, it just felt very uninspired. And like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And I, and I'm, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad, well, not glad because I would rather have you enjoyed this more than I did in that sense. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't want you not to like your book, Yeah. but I, even you coming back into it at this point, like I feel sometimes that I'm just sitting here, like after having read so many events over the past, I don't know how many years since I got back in the comics, like 10 years now or whatever, let's say, and I'm the bitter one. And maybe I'm just like over events. Right. But even you saying that you felt it wasn't all that. Well, you know, I've heard so many events like, like the DC or like whatever, the infinite crisis, but those are all the first ones. Those were done a long time ago. Sure. I think and like those might've been great ones to see. Yeah. But not this one. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I think, I think that the fact that you are also saying that should kind of should go to show you, like, it's not just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not every event is great. It's rare to have a great event. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Next up. Thor 750 with the uh, anniversary issue. I guess Thor 60 years celebrating 60 years. Yeah. Uh, or issue 24, the legacy numbering 750. 750, yeah. I don't know how they come up with these things, but uh, 60 years of Thor. And this is um, the bookend stories were by the regular team of Donny Cates and then Nick Klein, one of the artists on this run so far with Donny Cates. Uh, the start and ending bookend kind of moments of this story, uh, which continued the thing about his uh, his hammer being enchanted essentially by his now the dead Odin son Odin, and this the rest of the issue was them at a funeral kind of 
Yeah, uh, like Ellen. reading from the, the King of, or the Book of Kings or something. Yeah. Which, I thought the Beta Ray Bill story was pretty decent. I don't know if that's a new story or if that's an old story. The first one? Yeah, that's, so that's Walter Simonson, who is one of the most acclaimed, like, they, they brought almost, like, all of the writers and artists that probably have, like, the biggest runs on Thor. Yeah. Uh, came back to this issue to do this like jason aaron who just written, finished like a seven-year run prior to donny cates came back for us for uh, a story uh 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 what's his name straczynski came back for a story the writer al ewing he wrote a loki story and he, yeah that was in here uh he did a loki series uh then he had walter simonson who did the uh, beta ray bill story like you said at the start and then he had dan jurgens and uh claus johnson and, and inks who also did a great uh, Thor run in the nineties. So yeah, this had like, you know, they had about four or five different stories. Like I just mentioned by all-star creative teams. Like, so like, you know, there was a good mix of stories. I felt like I thought yeah. this one I'm talking about right here. Right. Yeah. 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 So you, so you like this one the best do you think out of all? I think so. Yeah. Like I didn't know much about the, you know, beta Ray Bill's storyline. And, you know, I guess this kind of just, just shed some light on that where he was before he became beta Ray Bill or before he was, Beta Ray Thor, or whatever they call him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite one was the one that J. Michael Straczynski wrote. The uh, and Olivier Coppel was the artist. It's the one where Thor um, wrote his will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a, that was a decent thought, one. I thought that one was my favorite, probably out of all the short stories. Um, I thought that was just really. A really interesting idea that he would write a will and he met with like the mortal lawyer or whatever and he goes on and on and tells people how to like live their lives compared to yeah. gods who have these long lives and how humans they shouldn't waste a second of the of their lives yeah. you know what i mean every moment counts and blah 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 it just it just felt very like you know what i mean it was it was it was it was interesting like i, I thought that was a, an interesting um take for him but it was really also the only modern day story i think that took place like everything else was like telling stories about uh the past of baby ray bill or the past yeah. of war and 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 the loki story took place like in the past as well like and he kind of because that took place during the end of the his loki series they had a little editor's note or whatever and yeah I mean, if you, if you i guess that's leading up to something because it said you know it's going to be continued on in the defenders beyond or something yes yeah, yeah, which that writer is also writing that miniseries. Yeah, but that didn't really hype me up for that Defenders Beyond book either. I think you have, I mean, to be honest with you, like, I think you have to have had some um, love for that series and knew that Loki series that, like, yeah. he, he had done because it was the same artist that was doing that series with him. So, like, I think if you read that stuff and were aware of it, but then other stories, to your point in this, where if you didn't even read it, you didn't need to have read those people's runs on the character because this is them just coming back and doing their thing. You know? Yeah, kind of doing a one shot. Yeah. So, it's, so there was, I mean, like any anthology type story thing, like there's always going to be ones that are better than others. But I thought it was a good mix of art and stories being told here. I thought it was, I thought it was decent. Yeah, I thought it was a decent issue. You know, a lot of filler. And I was just hoping for a, a, a tease at least of the banner, the banner Hulk thing. You know, after reading Hulk and seeing that freaking. Mjolnir come incoming. Thought right. there might be some reason why Hulk and Thor got a fight, but there is just really nothing about that there. Well, that's the crazy thing. There's an interesting story that happens at the end of this issue with the cliffhanger. Because now, as we found out at the end of the last issue, Odin, his spirit is now in Thor's hammer. So all, they're all sitting yeah. there talking about this guy. Yeah, nobody else knows about it though either. Right. Thor didn't tell nobody because he's the king, and he has kind of he, he and but now he's like plagued by his father's voice like coming out of like the hammer and he has so much confliction with his father and the way that he ruled and and he's still judging him as the hammer so like i'm just like at the end of it like really that was the best story i think out of the whole yeah movie. just like oh man i want more of that and then and then to your point it ends and then we know we're gonna go into this thor hulk crossover yeah and it kind of just leaves that whole door open like you know he goes to valhalla and valhalla's empty right yeah. So, and then Venom's supposed to show up after the the Hulk thing. Yeah. I'm like, what is Venom going to Valhalla? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. There's so much going on in this series. So, like, they're not. I don't even know if they're going to revisit that Odin story till like four issues later from now. Right? Like, At it's, least it's crazy. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was it, that's that's very interesting that he's in the hammer. I really like that. I really like the scene when he they're doing like the funeral pyre thing where they like they send him out into space and, and yeah, they're gonna shoot the arrow of fire uh, with uh, the arrow on fire and uh, you know his casket. Yeah, 
but it's like all the way far into the reaches of space and like he's just like here you go loki and he like he shoots it and he actually makes yeah it. i guess that's why he doesn't want to shoot the arrow because he knows odin isn't dead <laughs> he's in his hammer yeah oh it's, it's, it's kind of weird but <laughs> i like it i like it because he's just like even even like when he gives him the arrow he's like he's like father would not want this you're supposed to do it as the next heir or whatever and he's like ah whatever when have you done anything yeah. wants? and he gives it to him and then later on he goes back to the room and the, and the hammer's like i didn't want him to shoot that arrow. <laughs> <laughs> i taught you how to shoot a bull better than that <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm just like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so you just that's what I mean. can't shut him up. <laughs> I know because he needs them. That's his friggin' hammer, right? It's like you can't even get rid of that thing. That's like you need your hammer, right? Like he's he can get out yeah. that friggin' John drawer and axe or whatever again if you really wanted to, I guess. But like yeah. he wants that. I mean, he needs his hammer. It's well, if it doesn't talk to you, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> Find my dad stuck in a hammer. <laughs> give me shit all the time. Oh man! So what'd you give this one, Chris? I'll give it a three point five. And like I say, three point five doesn't mean it's a bad comic. I think it means it's a good comic. Just nothing, yep. nothing crazy, spectacular. Uh, I thought it was good. I liked it. No, you're making me second guess because I was going back between three point five and four. I'm gonna give it. Yeah, a like after talking about this, I was thinking giving it to a four. My initial reaction was to yeah. give it three point five. I'm gonna stick with a four, but that's mostly based off of, like I said, the bookend stories. And I can't get. I would give it higher if it was just that story. To be honest with you, but yeah, because there's a mix of different stories. But I liked more of the stories than I disliked the ones that. So I'm gonna give. Yeah, it like none of them were bad. Like that one where. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I liked, I, I, yeah, there was a couple that were just like whatever, but anyways, yeah, okay, all right, Deathstroke, Chris. Oh, all right, Deathstroke eight. Now here's a, I don't know if you want to call it an arc or an event. This Shadow War is, is shaping up to be something pretty decent, and I'm liking this one here. What do I got? Reading this, I'm gonna read it. And, you know, this would make me want to buy sort of the Robin comics that are tied in. Because I don't think I usually buy Robins, but I, I still have it. So I don't think I will. But I'd want to just to see where things go. Where did I put this here? Yeah. So it's a, it's a great issue. There's a new character, Angel Breaker. I think she was introduced in maybe one of the previous issues of this. And in this one here, they open up. It's a full page of her. Here, I'll pull it up. The art in this one, it's a decent, decent artist. Mm-hmm. What Panta Pantalena? Take a look. With this angel breaker. Oh yeah. So she's a looker, it looks like. Yeah. And uh, you get to see a lot more of her in this issue. Like I think when she was first sort of her first appearance, it wasn't sort of a a picture like that. You saw her more in action. It wasn't such a detailed shot. But she's a lot in here. I think she's one of Talia. Is it Talia Al Ghul? Yeah. One of it's basically her number one henchman, I guess. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so you get to see more her bit her issue. And I think in the last issue there's a moment between Talia Al Ghul and Batman. And basically it was kind of written off as just a moment of weakness between them. You know, you thought something was gonna happen between them. Yeah. You know, like I think that's how it ended the issue ended. And you're like, whoa, what's this? And then, you know, after it's, he's, oh, 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 what do I do? What do I do? It's like, God, fuck, come on. Before, so I mean <laughs> Yeah, well that's why you think maybe something's <laughs> happening there again, but then it was just it was wiped away. That's not where the story's going with that. And um, yeah, I think this is all firing. It's firing all cylinders and that art by Panela, Panelina, whatever. Yeah. It's all top notch. This is great. I'll give this a solid four. You know, the that stroke's really picking up, picking up steam here with this storyline. I, I'm going to read this because I because I meant to and I forgot about that event that was going on because I liked the last issue, which was, I think, the Batman issue of the yeah. War. I really, really liked that. And I was like, oh, I'm on board. And then I forgot completely about it. <laughs> because, I, because I look at the list and I'm just like, oh, I don't read Deathstroke, right? And then, but I, I forgot about this event going on right now. Yeah. Like if the Shadow War comes out as trade paperback, you know, where all the issues are lined up in order, that's not too bad. Because I did read those, uh, the, the trade paperback of, was the Hawkeye? Yeah. Did you like that? And I liked reading it in trade paperback. I was surprised. You know, everything's right there, there's no ads. Freaking just goes right through the whole, you know, the whole series. Boom, boom, boom. Two copy. That was great. <laughs> yeah, I don't, fuck, I can't buy this. And 
and well, trade paperbacks. Well, that's the thing, Chris. That's why if you don't read everything or you read some things digitally, then, yeah. read, and then if you hear it's good, check it out in paperback, right? It's also a good way of reading. I know you're not used to reading it that way, but I'm glad to hear that you read them and enjoyed them that way, right? Like you said, that's why most people like, prefer that because no, uh, it's just the weight. It's the way, yeah, especially like with stories that aren't sort of in continuity, like that stuff there. You know, if you read it now, you read it later, it's all the same, right? Right, but right. anyways, yeah, so solid four for Deathstroke, nice. And what do we got here? Action Comics, what's this, 1042? Yeah, and it's still more of the same with Superman and War World. He's fighting, I think now there's a revolution, blah blah blah, about hope and. You know, it's still the same story of, you know, the, the hope for the people and, you know, the people being the true heroes and having true strength and and all that sort of business. You know, it's it's not bad, but nothing new, nothing great. But the art in this one is still carrying this uh, carrying this comic. And let's see. The only, the only interesting story point in this comic is there's some Genesis fragment that's on Earth. And somehow it, there's a connection between that Genesis fragment and, fragment and War World. They're trying to do something to this fragment, and then you, Lois is there with, I guess, somebody, another family member of the the authority, and then you can kind of hear, you can hear Clark yelling, sort of at the the big battle between him and Mongol, mm -hmm. and then she goes, "Hey, that's Clark," and then that's that's the end of the issue. So that's interesting. Maybe there's some sort of boom tube or something where he's going to be moving around, but I guess not because he's just going to get zapped and die. But Anyways, that's another story. Sorry. I'll give it the 3.5. Once again, not because it's bad, but because it's good. Yeah, no, I hear you. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, next up, we got uh, Hulk Grand Design. This is the second issue. Uh, Madness is this one. And I actually didn't read this one, guys. I read the first one and talked about it on here, but I'll let you know why. The reason I didn't read this this week is because uh, this contains Peter David's. This contains an overview of a lot of the issues that occurred during the whole time Peter David wrote the Hulk. And I've been buying those hardcover omnibuses of the Peter okay. David run on the Hulk, which I heard is like the definitive Hulk. Run. Like it's like everyone's apparently the favorite Hulk run is Peter David's Hulk run. He wrote the book for like 10 years or something. So uh, the last and final of the omnibus is the fourth volume, right? I've been buying and I've not, not read any of it yet. It's coming out, I think next month. And I was like, if I read this issue, it's going to oh. condense everything that happens in those four omnibuses into one single issue and spoil everything that happens during that time. So I'm like, you know what? Going to take a pass on reading this one. I'll it'll stay in my collection for now. Maybe I'll revisit it after and see how he did. But um, the first issue dealt with all the older Hulk comics, which I, I haven't read and I don't have to read. So I wasn't as concerned. But then when I realized and thought about it, I was like, you know what? I don't want this to spoil everything for me. So I didn't didn't read for that reason. So if that is a concern for you guys out there, know that these these issues are designed to do that is condense all of the years of Hulk stories into like two oversized issues and try to kind of like deliver that, that information to you in like a kind of like a in a different way than like you know Yeah, it kind of makes sense of their timeline. Exactly. So so I think the first issue was great. If you're a fan of Hulk and you're not afraid to be swelled by that kind of stuff, I guarantee you this issue is probably just as good because it's more of the same type of thing he did in the first issue and and kind of just recounting things that happened in the Hulk comics during probably, like I said, the best era of the Hulk. So, uh, so yeah, can't rate it, didn't read it, but just wanted to let everybody know that. Okay, next up we got Harley Quinn number 14. Uh, let me see whether on this one here. Uh, okay, yeah, so this story continues with Harley doing time in Blackgate Prison in this issue. Uh, while Batwoman actually makes an appearance in this one, which was really cool. I like Riley Mo Rossmo, the artist. I mean, he's kind of like very weird and abstract kind of looking art, I would say. You know, probably not your most traditional art style. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea, but I really dig it. Uh, anyways, she's investigating some stuff, and she comes across uh, with Oracle's help because she's like in her ear. Um, you know, as we mentioned, there's all, all the heroes got somebody in their ear these days, right? Helping them out. But the Oracle thing's been around a long time. So I'll give them, a, I won't complain that much about that one. Just, it seems like every book now they got like an Alfred or, a, or whatever, somebody in their ear, right? It seems yeah. like, but, um, but yeah, um, Batwoman, sh she's investigating some sort of case and she ends up finding out while she's like investigating the, the, like this case that she's a part of that 
it turns out Harley was probably framed and she wasn't responsible for what she's actually in prison for. So by the end of the issue, um, you know, while she's spending time in the prison, she comes to rescue, like spring her out of the prison by the end of the issue. And because, uh, you know, she found out that she thinks she isn't uh, responsible. And her friend Kevin comes and visits her in this issue. And then it kind of gives you a look of Kevin with his new girlfriend and his relationship with this woman outside of his relationship with Harley, who he just like really loves and respects as a friend. And I really like that character in this. I think it kind of grounds Harley as like an actual normal person and not like a psycho. Like, <laughs> and, like, and they're both people that have had damage and trauma as a result of the Joker. Um, so I really like that dynamic. See, like she visits, he visits her uh, in prison. But they're just like really good friends. Like, I don't think they have a thing for one another, but like he's and he's currently in a relationship now. So it's actually it's been nice. It's 14 issues in developing a lot of different types of characters that are new to the, this book specifically and uh, giving her a kind of a purpose that it's been a while, I think, since you've seen in a Harley book. So. So, yeah, I gave it a four. I thought it was a solid issue. Uh, yeah, still pretty good. And then uh, next up, we got Rogues number two. I loved, love, love, love the first issue. I think it was it was my favorite of the week when it came out. Uh, for anybody that doesn't remember, uh, this is basically more of the same. I would say, like you know, the old they got all the band together in the in the first issue of all like uh, the Rogues, like all the Flash Rogue villains, you know, C D list type people that got together for one final heist. You know, we've seen this in like these type of movies before these heist movies and these ones where they get old and they kind of want to, throw, you know, <laughs> do one more one more uh, job. Right. Uh, and anyways, the job turned out to be he was trying to steal all the gold from Gorilla City from Grodd. And in this issue, they actually travel to that country. They make it there. They actually uncover Gorilla City. So they're there now and they're trying to get to this. Like they've already identified that there is a bank in Gorilla City and they're now there trying to make up a plan of operation to actually get into the bank now. But by the end of the issue, it looks like Gorilla Grodd or one of the other Gorilla characters in DC I may not be familiar with showed up and grabbed Captain Cold and saw him there and started like, you know, throwing him around by the end of the issue and like, what the hell are you doing here? Right. So they've, they've been had, it seems like they kind of know that they're there now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was just another really, really fun issue. I, I really think the characters are fun and well-written and it's a good story, a fun story. And I'm here for it. This was just, again, more of the same as the first issue. And I gave it the first issue a five. It was my favorite of the week. I'm going to give this one a 4.5. I think the first issue was probably still stronger because it was still setting everything up and kind of like ha having a book like that first time out and me not expecting it to be that good i think did a lot for me and where this you know like i said like chris was saying still really good it's just i'm not going to give it as, as good as the last time i think the intro was it was a little bit better but it's i mean 4.5 is nothing to sneeze that's a really really good series guys check it out if you're not afraid to buy a magazine size comic i should mention like chris <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> all right i actually I sad, I did read this, Chris, but sadly, I didn't have my physical copy available to me uh, at the time I picked up my comic. So that's on reorder, apparently. It didn't come in. So Punisher 2. There we go. Oh, that was a good second issue. The mystery of Frank's wife uh, grows, I guess. If the battle lines are drawn between the Hand and the Apostles. I thought that was fun to see. And the relationship between the, between Frank and the Hand is revealed a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm still, but really, I'm still interested in its full explanation because they really, you know, they kind of hint at why he's there, but that's still a big jump for Frank Castle to join the to lead the Hand. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I still think there's going to be a giant breakdown between Frank and the Hand coming soon, and that's what I'm waiting for. Um. I love some things about these this book, and there's some other things that uh, I don't love as much. Certain choices I think they've been making with the story so far, but you know, I will say they're interesting, and I'm still along for the ride. And there's more good than bad. It's just like certain aspects of the story because it is a different type of Punisher story being told, which I think is a good thing because there really hasn't been that many different types of Punisher stories. It's really, really kind of one note yeah. for the most part over the years. Um, as much as I love the Punisher, um, but I would say that 
the thing I didn't like though, Chris, is like you said, is the explanation as the of the relationship between the hand and this person. Like he's kind of like the emissary of like death. Like he see they seem like they think he's like the god of death, essentially. Like he's the he's well, he like, did seem to have some power and freaking brewing here, too. But that's a result of being within their clutches, they seem yeah. like, right? Like they're like the eyes, the red when they got red and stuff like yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want it to take too much of it. I mean, when you're dealing with the hand, there's, of course, going to be a supernatural element to it. But I just don't want this guy to be like a superhero or something by the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that's why I think everything's going to blow up and the Punisher is going to be the Punisher. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm all along for the ride to see him even get some superpowers yeah. or something for a little bit. Me, me too, right. well, for sure. For, but there's This could be all a dream, too, because I still can't see how his wife is back from the dead. And then they said, when the children are coming, too. He's sued. Yeah, he's like, sued. And it, yeah. That was, I was going to mention that. That's my favorite part about this. How messed up is it that he's literally post coitus sitting around in bed after just hooking up with her, touching her bullet hole scars? And I'm like, you're basically just fucking this woman right now. Like, she just sits around all day. He's like, yeah. I mean, again, it's his wife, but like, she's the undead. And he's like, oh, yeah, just keep taking these uh, potions that this voodoo doctor, or whatever, keeps bringing you in. Like, Somebody keeps bringing, like they're basically just bringing her back to hell. Like it seems like to like some sort of like normalcy. Like, and she's like just like a zombie that just like kind of sits. Well, yeah, she can't do anything. Like, she doesn't go anywhere. It's like, oh, you need to rest. Like, I think I'm feeling dark. Doing... It's kind of dark and fucked up. Like, I, I know it's his wife, but like it's really weird. Like, I was just like, that's kind of that's odd, man. Like, I'm like, I get it. Like, you you like mourn for her like for so long, and then your whole reason that your that your identity is really based off of the death of this woman. So, but then all of a sudden, you're just hooking up with her again. She's like, she can't do anything else except for sit there <laughs> like it seems yeah. weird man it's strange and then they're caressing each other's bullet holes and it's it's yeah. and then the thing i didn't like chris i'll tell you is the thing about the hand that apparently they were around like when he was a kid like investigating i was just yeah like, i didn't like that too much i like seeing punisher <laughs> as a kid yeah with uh with the captain america yeah. t-shirt on i thought that was good it makes sense which he he loves captain i mean that's yeah that's happened in other stories like he respects captain america. yeah like i remember the, the hail hydra stuff you know he was still on captain america's side just because he respects him so he much it's captain america exactly yeah no I, I i like that too but i don't like how yeah, yeah, how they showed up and they retcon everything that all oh, we've been watching since you were a kid. Like, get so out it's of like here. some prophecy type thing. Right? Yeah. I, I get it, but I'm like, ah, I don't know about all that. That's what I mean. Like, that's, that's what I mean. Certain choices uh, for the story, I'm like, ah, yeah, they could have they could have cut cut that page and it wouldn't ruin the story at all. But the violence in this series is top notch. I'm not even gonna say who shows up at the end. It's revealed who's running this uh, war people or whatever right by the end, but it, it makes sense. He's a character that has existed already before Marvel, but I won't spoil it for everybody. But when this character shows up and he like punches this one person, his whole face just explodes. <laughs> like ridiculous like the guy's face just like like there's a fist and then there's like what where used to be a face <laughs> like, just, like, just like blood and guts everywhere i'm like wow. it's almost like 300 there you know because when that guy comes when the apostles yeah. go there i will give you the banner with the banner cannon yeah you gotta screw this pow then bro the first issue i wasn't so sure about them but now i'm like oh they're cool actually i like these guys now yeah i like i like it by the end of it so what'd you give this one i'll give it a 3.5 once again I'm gonna give it a four. I'm gonna give it. A yeah, four. I was jumping around a four, but I don't want to give away these two high marks for no reason. Yeah. All right. Batman Beyond the White Knight issue two, Chris. Uh, you foray into the White Knight Batman universe, I guess. Uh, yeah. Really enjoyed the first one. What do you think about this uh, this issue? I think it's uh, it's a great follow up issue, full of iconic Batman characters, with more to come. It seems. This series has given uh, give me everything I didn't know I wanted. And, you know, all the like it's, this is like almost a step down from from the Dark Knights of Steel. You know, all these characters are still themselves, but there's no kind of crazy twists to them. You know, I like that Dick Grayson is sort of a bad guy, and I was worried that comparing this to that Batman Neo, Batman Beyond Neo Gotham or whatever. Like, which is more of a Terry McGinnis story, Terry McGinnis story. This is still a Bruce Wayne story. And, you know, I like Bruce Wayne running around with that Joker that's either real or not real. I don't know. But I think it's great. It's almost like his Oracle in his head still. Yeah. I, I you know, you come out, I don't know. Well, I don't want to, you can say if you want to spoil what happens there. But, well, but there you go. There's some big stuff happening at the end too with, uh, yeah. 
I was gonna mention what that is, the Joker. I wasn't gonna talk about what happened at the end, though. I, the, the yeah. Joker could be so Mad Hatter appeared in I think the first Batman White Knight series. So like apparently this might be something that the Mad Hatter left in Bruce's head that now has basically been activated, and it's like it's like a version of the Joker. Um, that's again, it's like the Thor hammer kind of thing. It's now like he has this version of the Joker who's inside his head that only he can talk to and he can see and everybody else doesn't know who he's talking to. So he looks batshit crazy. And, and, and he's just, again, he's, he's, he's helping him, but he's also pointing out flaws and weaknesses and like shit that he doesn't really want to talk about. Like he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, but it's not the Joker. It's the, what's his name? The guy, the Joker's name from, um, from the movie, um, I forgot that, you know, the Tim Burton movie, that's who they made the Joker's name in this actual series, but I forgot. Oh, I forgot Jack Napier? Yes, that's who it is. That's he even actually says that in this issue. He's like, oh yeah, but it's not me. It's the Joker because it, you should read the other series of the white Knight If you get a chance, Chris, if you like the format of picking up the paperback or whatever, I think I suggest you check out those older series because they are really, really good. Uh, just as good as this. And uh, so, uh, and this is only a couple issues in, and uh, they explain all that. Jack Napier is one side, and the Joker is the other side of the coin. He's almost like yeah. uh, he transforms into the Joker, almost like again, like you said, like the Dark Knights of Steel. The little changes that they're making in the in the story, the alternate kind of reality of this Batman universe, is really interesting. I, I gotta say, and the art's always top notch. Um, and a little bit of a spoiler alert here, but this is just to clear things up. Is that Harley Quinn at the end? Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and she's had a whole little mini series as well in this universe. And she was the main focus of like, I think, obviously I think the she was a big part of the first two series prior to this as well. So, um, but she's kind of been off to the side since the second series and she had kids and she stopped being Harley Quinn. She gave up the Harley Quinn yeah. thing. And then there's a really brilliant, showdown chris between there's an explanation of there being two harley quinns chris and she's the classic animated series version and there's like this shitty suicide squad there they actually come up with a way in this world that there was two versions of harley quinn there was when she stopped being harley quinn a new shittier version of harley quinn became like started yeah. coming around <laughs> as a harley quinn so it's again he he takes all the best parts of any iteration of Batman really in this series and combines it into this story. Like he takes Batman, the animated series, and now he's taking Batman beyond animated series. Then he, yeah. and then he takes stuff from the comics and he, he takes things from the movies, like, and he draws fantastic vehicles. This guy, I mean, Sean Murphy does it all, man. He's a great artist and writer for these. Uh, and yeah. Uh, what'd you give this one? I, I think this is yeah. great. I think it's great too. I'll give this, Oh, it was a 4.5. I just, I love the covers. I love the story. I love the art in there. Yeah. And like I said, it's just giving me all the stuff I didn't even know I wanted. You know what I mean? I I, I absolutely agree with you. Four point five. That's what that's what I was going to give it as well. Yeah, awesome. All right, next up, Chris. You surprised me this week, my friend. You you picked up Saga Saga. 58. I looked into it. You know, I had my stock there, and I was just sitting down. I go, oh, what the hell? I'll grab it. See what it's all about. So Unfortunately for me, I don't know if this is a great jumping on point. Nothing really grabbed me in this issue here. And, uh, you know, I, it was a good read. You know, it's kind of a crazy world that they live in. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but. Yeah, I was going to say um, this particular issue that I had uh, noted of it is that the story has been building. And as of this issue, they have a lot of balls in the air right now of story <laughs> plots that if you're just coming in on the on, on with this issue, I can understand you maybe not being as invested or interested or really know what's going on. Yeah. At this point. Because I think like because I think this is the third or fourth issue in since they've rebooted. Uh, sorry, came back to the series after like yeah. a year hiatus. I think it's the fourth issue. And with this issue, I feel like they've now got a few different story threads going on with people. Uh, you know, not everybody is what they seem. Um, you know, there's a, some trouble headed some way for some characters by the end of this issue that we haven't even seen since they've restarted. Like we haven't seen them since the old, the older last 50 issues of the series. So 
Um, so yeah, I, I could, I could understand maybe what you not, um, kind of getting as invested with this certain issue though, of this series, because, you know, a lot has come before it. And even, even, even that being said, I think since they have restarted this series a few issues back after taking such a long break, since they did do a time jump, I wouldn't say that this current version of the story is my favorite compared to before either. So there's that as well. What'd you think of the art? I mean, it, it's decent there. I didn't mind it at all. You know, it's it suits the story. You know, it's a nice world. But um, like I say, you know, if I was basing this on, I wouldn't be buying the next one. Like, you know, it's... Yeah. But it, no, I, I, I'll, I'll... Maybe I'll read a few online. Yeah. See what's if, going on, you know, if something... Maybe if it's a light week or something, check it out. Or yeah, well, it's like like a light week <laughs> next week, <laughs> but... Uh, so what'd you give this one, then? Yeah, I feel I don't feel like I'll give it a three point five, you know, but it's, I really don't have a, a strong feeling, you know. I don't think I've I'm qualified to give it a right a score. I'll give it a four. I'm not going to give it too much more than you, but yeah, I'll give it a four. I just think, uh, yeah, it does help. I think knowing some of the stuff that happened just before this with these characters, but that being said, they're still doing a slow build of a storyline right here. But this, yeah, I like that stuff with that dog character, and that girl with that white thing, where they're both widows. Yes. You know, they had a good interaction there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Her husband uh, died in the first 50 issues of this series or whatever. He dies towards the end. And and now, yeah, you're seeing, I guess, her talk about it finally with, with people. So, yeah, you're right. That was a good moment that those two characters shared. And they're kind of coming across people, uh, each other for the first time. That dog character was a new new character so far. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Saga. Uh, and then next up, Joker 14, Chris. Joker 14. There you go. One of the variant covers. Nice cover. Very nice. Nice line. Yeah, very nice cover. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much the only reason I bought this thing. But uh, I have been kind of reading this Joker series. And I thought this was going to be the last issue, but I think there's one more. This was more just a, I don't want to say it was a filler issue. Like, there's the big mystery in this issue is what did, uh, was it James Gordon? What did he do with the Joker? Yeah. In the last issue, there was that Samson family. They had the Joker on lockdown. They were ready to eat him. And then Bane and Vengeance show up. And, you know, all hell breaks loose. And, you know, I think this was going to continue. This kind of time jumps a little bit ahead after everything's been done. So the, the Samson family massacre has been publicly revealed. And uh, Bane gives some tough love to uh, the Vengeance. I guess he's trying to straighten her out. Or I don't want to say straighten her out. But she's under she's under some sort of influence, like okay. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but there's no resolution; it just hypes the the next issue. And then there's the backup story with uh, what's her with Punchline here, mm -hmm. and it was just a bit of a filler. I don't even think it's following that Royal Flush Gang story they had going on. But hey, it's a nice story. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of uh, the second stories, <laughs> and I'll give this uh, I'll give it a three point five two. You know, once again. Yeah, just because I think that's a that's a decent issue. It, it was a good issue. It's great art in the issue, and it's a good mystery because you know this whole this whole series has been about Gordon trying to kill the Joker. Yeah, and he does at the end. You know, during the issue, you do see that he does take the Joker, and he takes him back. And the the ending of the issue is basically Batman shows up and says, "Hey, Jim, where's where's the Joker? So maybe he killed him. Maybe he's got him locked in a room. I don't know." And then the Joker being the Joker, there he's always good. He's always kind of laughing at, even when he's caught. He's oh, now you got me. What are you gonna do? Ha ha ha! I win still. But it's good he stuff. To, he knows how to play head games for sure. Yeah, right? that's for sure. <laughs> uh, all right, next up, I got uh, Ghost Cage. Ghost Cage number two of three. Uh, yeah, great art still. Same still. Um, what's his name there? Forgot his freaking name now. Nick Dragata, of course on art and uh, story. Uh, this had a great opening sequence, this issue. This character, who I, we were just introduced to for the first time in the first few pages of this, is talking on the phone, trying to get a hold of the woman worker that's still working in this uh, facility that we met in the first issue. And he's trying to tell her how he like he really enjoyed seeing her at work, and like she doesn't know this, and she he enjoyed all her, his time getting to know her, and he never told her about how he felt about her. And he's yakking away all this water and all this rainstorm, like, you know, all everything's, you know, shit is, is 
getting pretty crazy for the people in the city outside this facility at this moment in time. Anyways, he's professing his love and all this to her on the phone. And uh, boom, <laughs> this thing falls on his head <laughs> and he gets killed. And I was just like, that's an awesome way to open up the issue. And then they, they never really touch on it again since then. And then like you cut to the inside of the facility and the girl's sitting there and she's like, oh, my phone just keeps going off. I don't know why this guy keeps calling me. <laughs> And I was like, that's awesome. Like, and I, I don't think this, the rest of the issue is ever as good as the opening sequence, to be honest with you. It was good. But that for me, I was like, that's a way to start an issue right there. I'm like, that's awesome. So I really dug that. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, um, it's uh, Doyle, who's this, who is this girl, the employee of this evil corporation, she basically realizes who she's really working for in this issue. Like she comes to that realization with other people's help that these people that she's helping maybe don't really have their, her best interest in mind. And then by the end of the issue amongst like, you know, like all these, like, like I mentioned, there's the big Kaiju, like big monsters, like, of like the elements that are breaking free from this facility. And this one you get introduced to wind and like some other type of element. I forgot which one, but it, you're basically just coming across all these big monster representations of like different things like wind and water and whatever else. And, and, and she's supposed, she's tasked to kind of like rein these guys in using this other creature robot thing she brought. And by the end of the issue, they actually help reveal that this person who she thinks is her boss is actually just like, he's fizzling out the whole issue. And then you find out he's actually just a hologram and behind him is actually a much weaker, smaller, older man that is basically the guy who's the puppeteer behind, like, everything in this corporation. And it turns out he's just a really bad dude. And with one more issue to go now, I think it's just a race to the finish to see if they can actually, I guess, stop this guy from doing this, this the destruction he's causing to the city with his evil corporation or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, like, it's a great series so far. And it's, it's not a big commitment. It's three issues. If you like manga or anime, it definitely has that style to it. It's in black and white. It, it, his art is very, you know, has the speed lines and everything. I think is very, uh, reminds me of like an anime or a manga comic or something like that. So I think if you're into that, you should definitely check this out. And only one more issue to go. So it'll be collected in a couple of months in a trade paperback. So I, I give this a four. I'm a big fan of the artist. Uh, the story is fine, but the art is really what I've come here for on this one. So. And then we got Godzilla Rivals versus King Ghidorah. Uh, now, I don't really read Godzilla comics all that often. It depends. Sometimes good artists or writers work on the Godzilla comics that IDW publishes. So I'll check I'll check them out now and then, depending on who's doing them. This is a one-shot issue by uh, drawn and written by Adam Gorham, an artist who's, uh, I think he lives in Hamilton. He's Canadian. And who's, he's really good. I like his work a lot. Um, he, this is the first time I think writing like this issue, he wrote Andrew this. And I think this is the first time he actually, instead of working with the writer actually wrote it. And I think he did a pretty good job. This is just a one shot about Godzilla. Uh, essentially it's, it starts off with humans being like invaded by actual aliens from Mars. And then Godzilla like comes up out of the ground and starts defending the humans in the earth because they're attacking his earth where he he's from, I guess. So like Godzilla comes out out of the water and he starts fighting these aliens and the aliens actually end up taking him down and uh, basically abducting him and taking them to his, their planet. <laughs> and then, and then uh, he ends up just in like this, they, I guess like a ring of sorts, like just fighting, I guess for their amusement. And then that's when you actually see him, uh, meet up and fight uh, this King Ghidorah guy on this other planet. Uh, and I mean, if you're a fan of the Godzilla films, I'm sure this would be fun for you. And you probably have more reference to a lot of this stuff than I do. I've only seen a couple to be honest with you. So I'm not even a huge fan of the property. I mostly picked it up for the art, but it was a fun story. He ends up going to this planet and the humans end up going there because they're still facing off and trying to uh, find resolution from this whole thing between the aliens and earth. So the humans, they have a scientist that goes up there and they find Godzilla up there. And Godzilla, I guess, during his time on Mars's uh, planet, on Mars, the planet, 
he's sucking up all this radiation from its core or something like that. So by the end of the fucking issue, he goes like super Saiyan because he's got all this power <laughs> that done up in him. And like, he just, you know, here. So like bars is core or whatever they're saying, like he's getting all this radiation, like he sucks it in. There's like some, you know, some, some sort of explanation like that. And he feeds off of it essentially. And yeah, by the next, uh, by the end of the issue, he just goes crazy. <laughs> it just blows everything up. The humans escape. And they're like, well, I guess that does it for this alien race. But what happened to Godzilla? And he's still out there, probably, folks. <laughs> so we'll see where he lands next time. These rival said, maybe jump from Mars back to Earth. <laughs> These rival issues apparently are just like one shot issues they're doing of him uh, facing off against different type of kaiju creatures from the Godzilla movies. Like King Ghidorah, I guess, was established in other films. So like. Uh, you know just it'll be like you know what is what you know there's that big butterfly guy and you know what i mean like i forgot uh mothra oh, I, i'm sure there's a rivals issue that's like godzilla versus mothra they've just been doing all these like one shot issues with like different artists and writers and it was fun you know what i had a lot of fun with it to be honest with you as you can tell like i gave it a four actually i thought the art was great i thought the story was just like just dumb fun and to the point and kind of what i was looking for i guess in the godzilla comic so there you go godzilla all right, the scumbag issue 13. Chris, you picked this one up as well. Did you pick it up for the did. cover? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, that. the very cover. That's why the Jaws homage. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Very neat. So, what did you think about this one with this being the penultimate issue, Chris? Because this is the second last issue I just found out at the end of this issue of the series. Yeah, that's why I read that too. I like the Fonzie cameo there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, right there on the first page. Hey, <laughs> you can't go wrong with Fonzie in your comic. No, yeah, but uh, I, you know, I'm happy that the scumbag is an actual scumbag. <laughs> he is. Oh, yeah. You know, even that jerkler. You know, I know what's going on with him and that uh, robot. Is that a robot that he's with there? It's a repurposed uh, robot that he wanted to become a sex bot who's refusing to have sex with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's the great part about it. <laughs> Not that. There's a lot of stuff about ideologies or battling ideologies, and that's you know that's yeah, decent. That yeah, was good. Like I, said, I can't really comment too much about what's going on, but it, it looked like it has been a good series and uh, a little bit of a smart comic, I guess. But it's fun, you know. And his powers fail him, and I don't know if his his middle finger is with what unleashes his powers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is basically, yeah, the penultimate issue. Like I said, you find out this is the second last issue and the next one's the last one running out, of, running a bit out of steam. I'm actually kind of quite glad that this is the, the, the next issue is the last one because this has been all one long story. They've been telling the whole way through, not just really arcs. Uh, so I think that I got the point of this, like, you know, some things don't need like 50. Issues. Yeah. You don't need 15 issues to talk about, you know different you know, ideologies fighting each other and trying to find peace their middle ground you know exactly i mean this is great and all but by this issue i'm like okay i get what you're trying to say with this you know what i mean yeah. like unless he like pulls something out of his ass with this last issue where you know some make some last point in it, you know op opinion or point on something i'm just like okay yeah i get i get i get what this story was so but it's been good it's been good i have no complaints um but i'm glad it's wrapping up uh, you know, our favorite dirtbag double agent still stuck in between two opposing forces in this issue while still trying to have sex with his set with this with a robot <laughs> that he, he's tried to make a sex bot that does not want to have sex with him. And it's he's all about peace and love, baby. Ernie Ray Clementine. <laughs> so, like, there you go. That's that's the scumbag. It's actually a really it's been, it was a really fun story. I'm looking forward to the last issue. I, I I've had a lot of fun with this, and like Chris said, it's it's commenting a lot. I think on yeah different ideologies and stuff like that ways of like uh you know being the the left and the right and whatever you know yeah peace and love like you know hippie kind of ways of I'm just gonna have sex and do drugs and, and and somehow he's the guy that they all have to depend on in this scenario somehow and that's what makes it kind of ridiculous and great right so uh yeah so what'd you give this Chris yeah, I'll give this three point five same I gave this three point five as well so yeah. Do like that cover though. I don't know if it has nothing to do with anything, but seems like this Jaws homage has been around on a uh, different co different comics. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing, but that is a cool cover, absolutely. All right, Chris. So it's uh, it's uh, it's stayed in our our last slot on the show here, despite not coming out three times a month, but it looks like at least twice a month for now. Ooh, look got a variant cover here. 
the Gwen and Mary Jane. Why not have both, guys? <laughs> it's why the sure. black cat and Mary Jane. I know I black cats on it, but I think uh, Gwen, Art Drum did cover. I said Gwen. I meant yeah. I meant black cat. Yeah, did, uh, Art Drum did full coverage of Mary Jane and a full cover of Black Cat. And I don't know. I think you only could buy him on like his Art Germ website. And they are sold out like in freaking five minutes. Yeah. 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 But I bet. Very cool, though. Okay, Chris. There we go. So, this is a big release. This is post Dawn era. Amazing Spider Man number one with JRJR back on art. Zeb Wells writing it. Uh, what do you think of this, Chris? Well, it looks like a big story is coming. And this issue just uh, raises more questions. And doesn't hint at any answers. You know what I mean? Like this, that front page just puts out there. And then six months later. Yeah. Like what happened? Like I've been wanting to know that since they freaking put it out there. You know, this stuff with, you know, everybody's mad at him. He's disappeared for six months. What happened in those six months? And then the ending too. Just, well, I don't know what the heck that was about. I don't know. I just feel like uh, bad things are coming in Peter Parker's way. Man. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the art? I thought it was okay. If he puts this effort into it the whole way, I'm down. I'm okay with it. I think it suits this sort of, um, this bad luck sort of vibe. You know, you can't have all this, you know, this photorealistic art or this flashy, colorful super art and him getting fucking, you know, pounded down by life. You know, it's almost like a depressing sort of art. Um, I dug it. I mean, I, I think JRJR is uh, uh, some people love him. Some people hate him. I'm somewhere in between. I think some things he's done have been really good. Spider-Man is something that I think he's always been great at drawing. So has his father. Uh, yeah. And Ramita like I, I only hope he didn't really try hard for this one. Cause it's the first issue. And then it slacks later on. Like if this is what he does, exactly. I'm okay with it. And and that's the thing. He's able to dash out that two. He he's fast enough to dash out two issues a month, Chris. But whether or not the quality is going to stay up there, and it, and, yeah. and I also think he's one of these um, artists that's very dependent on if he has a good anchor. Now the guy who's inking his work on this, I think did a really good job. Like you said, if they look just as good as this issue did, I'm here for it. Like I'm on board for sure with these, this art. And I've been someone who's thought that JRJR has also did some really bad art as of recently, everybody like he, he just came from DC. He was working at DC for a few years. He was exclusive from Marvel for a long ass time. Then he worked over at DC last few years. His DC work was mostly horrendous in my opinion. Like I just think he did, did some bad work over there for DC for whatever reason, but him on Spider-Man is a good fit. So I'm, I'm really happy about him being on. And then, like you said, if he looks, if it looks like this, you know, but this is an oversized issue. I mean, like they better not, they better have another backup artist or something switching off every arc with him or something. Cause like if he runs out of steam and then he starts putting in some shit ass work, all of a sudden it's not going to be cool that, he, that they, that yeah. you know what I mean, like, so um, anyways, I thought this was a great first issue, man. Like to your point, like I, I as long as it's a story worth telling the fact that they're kind of stretching out what exactly happened to him, I don't really care. They, they could take their time telling the story yeah. as long as it's not some stupid story and reason for why all this happened. But clearly his life is back into a sort of disarray that I'm used to with the old Spider-Man comics. Like this, this is like, you know, his marriage is on the outs. Everyone hates him. Like he's behind on rank. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's broke. Like that, that is the Peter Parker look. Like that's, that's, I'm here for that, man. I'm yeah. like, this my, this, this I didn't realize how much I miss Spider-Man, Chris, during that fucking stupid Beyond era for the last few months until I read this issue. I'm like, yes. I'm like, this is what I like Spider-Man for. Not that other Ben Riley bullshit that we had to deal with for so yeah, long. Like, I was sure. like, yeah, this was a Spider-Man comic. I really but this isn't continuing from the the previous Spider-Man. Like this, he's in a different world here, it seems. I don't know. I don't think so, man. No, because because there's a couple of things they even touch on in this issue that made you feel what, what the the human torch still being on fire. That kind of yeah, that kind of uh ties into the main continuity. Same with this guy. This what the hell's going on with Mary Jane at the end? I don't know. So same with this guy showing up. So they mentioned this. You remember he's like going on about the rose. The rose being the kingpin now. That's a different yeah. current thing. And so is uh, they even mentioned this guy. He keeps talking about the green door, the green door. Now that is something that's pulled directly out of the last Hulk run before the Donny Cates one, like that green door theory about gamma radiated uh, be like things. 
that was that Al Ewing Hulk. Like that was a whole theme of that guy's book was him thinking of this like portal essentially. It was hard to explain, but like that green door thing's from a previous Hulk yeah. run. So okay, well, I don't know if it's a spoiler at the end, but I gotta ask this. With, go ahead. With Mary Jane and the kids. Whose kids are they? Are they her kids? It sounds like they're her kids. Yeah, we don't know. Are they her and Peter Parker's kids? Like, she never had kids in the other one, did she? No. But this could also be, there's the Renew Your Vows universe of Spider-Man. Where yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's not continuing from the Spider-Man 93, like, in that same world there. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. But, like, that cliffhanger was pretty crazy. But even this thing. With Robbie, uh, Robbie's son dating Tombstone's daughter, that is also yeah. from the previous. That's from the last thing beyond. I thought that was okay too. Maybe I don't know. Be the before the Beyond era of uh, Spider Man, the uh, Nick Spencer stuff yeah. that was established in that series. So I don't know, man. Like I don't. Maybe she's with somebody who has kids or something. I don't. I don't know. I really. I, you're right. That other than that, that's the only thing that didn't make sense out of everything in this issue. Like now, that was like what? What's like you know this like freaking yeah. different world here or something? I loved it. I mean, I personally love this issue. I, I I I don't know if it's just because I was in need of a Spider-Man comic where it was Peter Parker as the main thing, and maybe I'm maybe I'm praising this too much for what it's worth. But I I thought it was absolutely uh, fantastic. Yeah. This issue debut issue. This I needed this. I think I'm just not a big fan of Tombstone because theoretically, if Spider-Man wanted to wipe out Tombstone, he could do it without breaking a sweat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As Tombstone as the the big villain, go oh, tomb all oh, no. Now, you know, Spider-Man's my problem. I'll take care of him. Really, I don't think... I know Tombstone's a kind of superpower type of person there, but I don't think he's on the same power level as Spider-Man. He's more of a gangster, right? Like, yeah. yeah, no, I, exactly. I don't mind that. You know, they got to dumb down Spider-Man power so, so things can be even, that's okay. But but I know, like, I've seen, like, the, the covers for the future issues. And I don't know, things are getting crazy. Yeah, I I loved it. Like I said, I thought it I thought it was really good. Uh, I I like I like Peter Parker. I like <laughs> I messed up to say I like him being miserable with everything going on. That's because like when he used to read even like the back when I was growing up, like he was life was always a mess, and that's what made him relatable. Like he, you know what I mean? Like he was like not to say my life was a mess, but like at all times. But it's just like oh, you're behind on the bills or. You know, you're not doing you're 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 missing appointments with people or like your 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 relationship is on the outs or like and then it's, it seems like since that six months before, like everything seems to be now a mess, like in his life. That was all right. Like it seems like prior to this, right? Like it, he got out of the hospital, something catastrophic catastrophic happened clearly, and uh this is where we're at, right? I don't know. I'm interested. I mean, I I I'm very interested in what, what the story is. If I could wish for anything for this run, if this just became the news, like the new Spider-Man, and they allow Peter Parker to grow up or to grow. You know, like, I don't know, they take him here. I don't know how old he is, but mid-20s here maybe, or if, even if he's 30s here, and just let him go on from there and not yeah. not de-age him again or something. Let him turn into, a, like, you know, not an old man, but if he has kids, whatever. Like, you know, seeing Superman in that action comics as an older person is so, it, it's good. Yeah. And I don't know why they can't do it with him. You know, they can have all, you know, and freaking give Miles Morales some space to be the freaking Peter Parker or the... The yeah. spider, the young Spider Man, you know, because now he's basically like, you know, my, he's cutting Miles Morales' grass almost, you know, because they can't have the two people be the same sort of person, you know. I agree with you. I like seeing them age the heroes up too. But, uh, and, uh, you know, well, you know it doesn't have to happen in, in one year or two years, but just let him go and not have a, you know, a, a 50 issue run and then, okay, we're going to bring somebody new again and we just reset him back to, to where he's, you know, 25 or 30 again or something, you know. Yeah. But, that's besides the point. I thought it was a great issue as well. I love it. I'm down for it. I'm looking forward to more. What do you and, do? Um, well, I'll give it a 3.5. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't think it was spectacular. I don't five. like Tombstone. Five. Five. Wow. Five. I love this issue. I love this issue. Like I said, I need some Spidey in my life. But I, this, this week, it, it was a five for me. Yes. I know surprising, but I... I, I really dug this. This was at the top of my stack. Is this your number one? 
We'll get to that shortly. No, I mean, not number one, but the first one you read then. Like, yes. you know, when you got your stack. Yes. You took this out. Wow. This was number one, and Dark Knights of Steel was number two. They're also the two books I've given a five to this week. So there I was going to try and save it for the end, but I think I read this. I have to read the second after Dark Knight. Okay. Dark Knight was the first one I read. So there you go. We swapped it around those ones. So there you go. There you have it, guys. Amazing Spider-Man number one. Look forward to more talk about that on the show, of course. All right, so very quickly, though, this week, uh, the new Marvel previews has come out, and we talked about maybe continuing to do this segment. I think it's a good one to talk about things that are going to be coming up in the next couple months down the road that we might be interested in checking out, me and Chris. Uh, the previews catalog and stuff, and possibly the DC one, if I can figure out a way to put it up on the screen, maybe we'll take a look at next week because it's a much smaller week, and we're already running uh, long on time. But let's look at the Marvel previews, do a quick flip through here, and mention anything that we think we might be picking up how about this chris you're gonna be grabbing avengers yeah i'm picking up the variant cover though i think the variant cover looks better than the the a cover yeah yeah this sounds this has been a long time coming in the series they established this avengers bc at the start of this run and this is 50 something issues later so i mean they've done little stories here and there about it but like the fact that they're finally getting a one shot where they're going to talk about them like this i think it's really oh this cool. is just the one shot yeah I believe so. Okay. All right. So I guess yeah. Odin's gonna bang Phoenix in this then. Well, they've already they've talked about that happening already before. Yeah, but yeah, that's 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 uh, yeah, that is something that occurs. Absolutely. Uh okay. I'm I'm now the judgment day, I'm in for it too. Okay. I don't know. I'm in too. I'm in too. I'm not picking up all the other minis and stuff like that that surround it, but I, I'm in for this one for sure. Looks like it's gonna be two issues a month, and this is yeah. the, the crossover between Eternals, Avengers, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, X Men. So, yep. yeah, I'm, I'm in for it. Me and Chris are in for that event. Some art from that. Yeah, there's the, the are you Arthur gonna, Adams. Are you going to bother with this? I don't know, man. I think I might read this digitally. I think I might because it's also written by the same writer that's writing the event. So, I'm like, you know what? This might be worth it. And I do like the X Men right now. I, I might read this digitally, though. I don't think I'm going to pick up the issues of this. It's a three issue. Yeah, story. I think that's a, that's a wise decision. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the Art Adams variants on these issues, definitely buying both of those. Absolutely. Yeah. Immortal X Men 5 and X Men 13, which I think are also going to be tie ins to the event, guys. Like, this these art Adam covers are beautiful looking that they have as the variants. Definitely picking those up. You know that White Queen's gonna make an appearance on that thumbnail in the future. <laughs> uh anything here, Chris? No, nothing there. Me neither. Uh X Fortnite, none of that. I'm not getting sucked into a peach there. No. Their Momoko stories. This one, I don't know, the oh you're right. It? This is the next chapter, I guess, in her uh, yeah. her uh, her story that she was doing with the demon stuff, right? Demon days, and now it's demon wars. Yeah, that was crazy stuff. I couldn't understand any of those demon days. I'm not going to be getting this either, but this definitely does, I will say, look better than the last series, at least the concept of it. But, like, is it going to make any more sense? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But the art's nice. The art's nice, though. I do like her style. You got an art germ cover there. I might pick that up. I was going to point this out to you. I mean, I know. I mean, the cool thing about this too, though, Chris, is it is it is a first issue. So it is the number one, so right. yeah, that'll probably like make it on the list. Man. That is a nice. That is an awesome art germ cover. Yeah. All right. And, you know, Doctor Doom and this Captain America might tempt me, but uh, I think I'm going to stay away. I'm staying away as well. Yeah, I'm going to. I'll I'll wait and hear what I what see what I hear about these. If these are if I hear it, either of these are good, I might check them out. But there does look to be some interesting things going on now. They both have their own book, Captain, yeah. uh, you know, Rogers and uh, Sam. Uh, Spider Man, yeah. of course, gonna getting get him, getting yeah, yeah, the Gleason with that uh, the design variant. See? Then I think he's got another Gleason cover in there. I might oh. be buying fucking three issues of this goddamn cover <laughs> of the comic. Uh, as you can see, JRJR is still the artist on these issues, right? I think there's only. Well, I think he's gonna be in a long run for this. Yeah, the only issue I don't think he's been solicited to draw was the oversized sixth issue or the one before this. I think there's gonna be. Oh, yeah, I think six issues. Like, no, I think everybody's gonna be on that because that's like a, a nine hundred or something. Yeah, so that's that's not the that's the one that he's not drawing fully, but everything else he's been drawing lately. So let's see if he keeps it up. I mean, because the quality was good in this one uh daredevil of course i'm going to be picking yeah. up. there's the defenders book we were talking about earlier yeah I'm, I'm gonna check this out and trade i've got the first mini series in trade it is good i do like the art team and the writer behind this i just not gonna pick it up in issues 
I can't believe the Beyond is still floating around. Right. How about this? Anything here, Chris? Yeah, I'm getting the Thor, getting the Iron Cat. I'm going to pass on the Marvel and Ant-Man. I think I'm going to be picking up possibly these three, including Ant-Man, like the two that you mentioned, and Trade. So depending no. if I read them digitally, if you're going to be checking it out, possibly. But um, but yeah, I, I might read Iron Cat along with you digitally, but I'm going to be picking up everything here at Trade, except for Ms. Marvel and Wolverine. Uh, well, no, I don't know what the hell that is. Spider yeah, twenty nine. I'm getting that though. That's for sure. That's uh. Are you? Okay. That's Spider Man ninety nine's grown on me. That's a pretty cool costume. Then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Everything else go. going on there. Uh, no. This exterminator is starting to intrigue me. It sounds like a good team. It does sound think, like a good team. If it's a good artist inside there, that would definitely get me. It sounds like a real good team. I'm with you. It it does. That black page looks pretty decent. Yeah. Freaking Dazzler, you can't go wrong. X23 or whatever yeah. they want to call her. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, the, uh, the Jubilee. Yeah. I mean, that is, it is a good, it is a good lineup. Believe me, I thought about it. It is a good lineup. I'm sure that with the, the younger Wolverine girl, what's, I don't know what her name is. I'm well, sure she'll show up. Oh, um, Gabby. Yeah. 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 Uh, nothing here for me. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, well, yeah, New Mutants, maybe. Yeah. Oh, magic. It's magic. Yeah, it's magic trying to get back her uh, her hell business. Joe. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's variants. Is that the Phil Noto? Is he writing this or something? Drawing it. The artist that was on that X-Men Devil's Reign series. Yeah. He's good. That's, that's interesting. This does sound like a good series, this variants. I might be reading that digitally and picking up the trade, actually, but I think I am going to be checking that one out because I do like Jessica Jones a lot. I actually really enjoy a good Thunderbolt series. I didn't pick this up, but again, if I hear good things about that, that may be possible. I might pick that up because I really like the Thunderbolts as a concept, like a group of villains. I do like that. Like, this looks like it's uh, the hero of Thunderbolt. This is oh. led by Hawkeye. Oh, never mind that. I'm not in that with that. <laughs> never mind. Take that back. <laughs> uh, Chris, I think you're going to be picking up these two, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Avengers, Avengers Forever. That looks beat. That looks sick. The, the, nice cover. The Fist of Thor. Yeah. Yeah, we're passing on this one, but yeah, yeah. Punisher, yes, Hulk, yes, yeah, for sure. These two, for sure, for sure. This looks interesting. Whatever. You reading Moon Knight at all? Or yeah, oh, sorry. Trade. Oh, yeah. trade. I'm reading it in trade. It's really good though. The first trade was really, really good. So like, I've heard. Really good. Getting freaking... I don't know. We'll see. The show's also very good. I will. I, say. I haven't. I haven't watched it yet, but I might try and track that down. Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, for Venom, whatever. Crossing over in um, store? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy. What's going on here? <laughs> <I don't, you> <laughs> this is going to be fun, though. I think uh, Donny Cates, you know, with Venom again. That's cool. I'm, 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 I'm there for that one for sure. Uh, how about this, Chris? Anything here? Gwenverse? Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, Gwenverse for sure. It's the end of that. Fuck that carnage. <laughs> Maybe I'm not. You keep second guessing yourself on that carnage, eh? What, are you supposed to bond with someone that's supposed to be crazy? Like, and, but they're talking like Hydro Man is still alive here. I thought he was dead. Yeah. So, but anyways, we'll see. Um, I'm picking up Fantastic Four still, and I'm gonna yeah. continue with the Savage Avengers. I hope this is good because uh, I've already now this will be three issues in for pre-ordering. So. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I'm. I'm yeah, I'm there for Captain Marvel, Iron Man. My word. Doctor Strange 5 looks like he's come back from the dead. Yeah, yeah, nice cover. zombie. I'm in for all. I'm, uh, I read these two in trade. Like, I do read these yeah. two that you're reading in issues, and I, 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 I agree. Both great series, but uh, I'll pick up Strange in issues for sure. Uh, I'm I'm actually gonna grab this. I'm down for a Predator comic, man. I'm not so much in the aliens, but the Predator, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this out. I was actually like, because I never I ignore that whole alien Star Wars section for the most yeah. part. I'm like, you know what? I literally dig Predator. Uh I'm like I'm like the Ghost Rider Wolverine comic cover. Yeah. But maybe. Yeah. But the only thing that's getting me is this Predator with him holding Iron Man's head. If that's just a freaking swerve cover if if he's in the marvel universe i'd be so down for that even if it's not like in the true but but yeah. if he's fighting all the marvel people but if he's just predator and you know in normal earth and he comes in and he's gonna kill uh, some kids or whatever 
I think it's just going to be a gimmick for the cover, personally. Chris. Yeah, that's what I think. Aliens really, the Aliens had a bunch of covers with the Marvel characters on it as well when it came out, like variants. But yeah, but they never crossed over. They never crossed over. So, I mean, if they're going to do the same thing with this, but I really like the writer and artist on this. So, I'm going to check. I, I'm checking it out because, like, like I said, usually I don't, but I'm like, I do prefer Predator to Aliens. So, I'm like, I'm going to check this out. I think, I just, I think it might be fun. So, we'll see. We'll see if yeah, it is. It's not bad to make Predator comics already that are freaking. Garbage. Anything here? Star Wars? I know you no, no Star Wars. Oh. You know, unless there's a good Vader cover coming out, but yeah. or you know, a good Star Wars cover. I'm getting that. Uh, I think I picked it up by accident. Uh, it was like a, it's like a not a trade, but it's three issues of that Tales of that uh, the Black Chewbacca. Oh, Black Chrysostan or whatever his name. Yeah. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was just like I thought it was a cover just of him in a new issue, but it turns out. It's basically his first three appearances or something like in Doctor Afria and whatever. Right. Okay. I picked it up on him. He's a good character. I yeah, know. I guess I'll get to read up, see what he's about. Um, but yeah, that's and then I'm picking up the hardcover of this Bounty Hunter stuff when it comes out because I, I I like the Bounty Hunters from Star Wars, but again, not picking it up in issues. So yeah, that does it for the issues. Then the rest is uh you know collections. They're bringing out a hardcover of Secret Wars from back in the day. That's pretty cool. Did the R Ross one in the bottom there? Yeah, he does a he does a recreation. Of pretty Mike, cool of the Mike Zach cover. Yeah, but I think I'm getting the original. I, I am picking this up, but anyways, you have the Secret Wars already. What's that? Do you have the Secret Wars already, like the the original, or no? I don't know. Have I you read it at all? Yes, I have. Yeah, oh, okay. I, read, I read it. So I, I'm going to be picking up that hardcover, though. So there you have it, guys. Since we don't do collected editions, we won't get too far into that. But, uh, but yeah, that's the Marvel previews. Stay tuned for next week. Maybe we can do the previews magazine and the DC. Um, it's just much smaller. Well, smaller week compared to this week. I don't know, at least maybe for me and maybe not Chris. It sounds like that. All right. Anyways, guys, uh, Chris, mentioning, uh, speaking of that, why don't you let us know what your uh, – looking to pick up next week okay next week it doesn't look like much i got avengers forever five oh. iron man 19 spider-man 2099 batman 123 that's it that's it eh okay how, how many is that it's like four maybe i have a couple pre-orders that i forgot about but okay, i don't think yeah. i've that many not a huge week for me either but a couple more than you it sounds like yeah batman 123 uh, Batman Killing Time 3, Deadly Class 52, Firepower 20, Flashpoint Beyond 1, Little, Monster, Little Monsters 3, and A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance 7. Yeah, I mean, if they have Flashpoint Beyond in the store on the shelf by the time I get there, maybe I'll pick that up. Yeah, yeah, there's, there should be interesting. I did read the, I read the, whatever, the Flashpoint Zero online. What'd you that's think? so fun watching it and what's his name got fried right so that's why i'm like just because of that scene it saved it for me i'm like okay i, I might check out the next issue and I, yeah, here i am right checking it out so uh yeah so they, seven for me next week so yeah not a huge not as huge of a week next week for sure so i'll take him because i think i i'm when i put in my with that june orders freaking i was like i like four pages there's freaking typing everything in there man holy <laughs> smoked it's like 70 comics coming in june are you switching shops or what's happening there? Yeah, I think in June I'm gonna try the new shop. So I, I'm putting all I gotta put them. Well, I don't have to. I try to get all my comics in by two months ahead. So this week I'm gonna try and get all my July stuff in. Right. Okay. Good. That sounds good. Uh, all right. So stay tuned for uh, more conversations of that stuff next week, guys. Uh, but now we're at the end of the show. Our favorite part here, of course, the part that Chris sometimes forgets. <laughs> I forgot about it. I'm just looking through it right now. Our favorite book of the week. All right. So let me see here. Hold on. You know, I actually had not just going being not just going based off the the, the ratings I gave here today guys because sometimes I kind I usually don't, don't rate them before I maybe give it some thought but I rate them on the spot based on the conversation a lot of the time that me and Chris have as well so you know sometimes my ratings change depending on like you know when we kind of talk about it a little bit more uh but I gotta say like there was a few good contenders for me this week it kind of went to a few different titles I think and it was a, it was a big week I had like 13 comics or something like that so yeah I think overall, though, I'm going to give it to Amazing Spider-Man number one. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I almost gave it to this, though. I almost gave it to this. This is my next runner-up. This is my next runner-up. This is neck and neck for me this week, but I got to give it to Amazing Spider-Man number one. Okay, well, here we go. In true DC fashion, I will swerve you. <laughs> 
I was like, get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> yeah. I do like that cover. Now that I wish you didn't freaking tell me that was two pages because I was looking. I go, how do they do that? It looks like there's freaking depth to this. Because I'm looking at it in my comic bag. I'm poking it. It goes fucking move somehow. <laughs> No, nah, but the, the White Knight, like I say, this is a big surprise that I, I like all this stuff so much, you know, and they're showing up all these old characters and kind of how their life played out. You know, you got uh, what Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon is uh, as the what the commissioner. I imagine they had still had the romance when they were young and now they're not. And now they're apart from each other. Yeah. And, you know, you got uh, the Jason Todd in there. I, I think it's great. Uh, that's, that's my favorite. That's my the after these two that would be next for me. That's like, like like I said, even not going by ratings. When I said there was neck and neck with a few different books, that was right there as well. Well, yeah. I just expect Dark Knights of Steel to be awesome now. So yeah, yeah. So, so it's kind of like push. It's got to like blow my mind that it's there. that yeah. it's going to be number one. You know, like well, maybe cool. when this comes to a head, and you know the story really starts firing up, I'm like, I don't know how it can fire up even more. But there's even no there's no talk about Batman in this one. Or the Kents. There's still there's so much un, there's so much stuff left on the table in every issue from stuff from before. Yeah. And when that stuff comes together, yeah, that's got to be crazy. Yeah. And there's gonna be a time. This is like I said. This is like Game of Thrones when you knew the season was ending and you knew everybody's gonna finally come together. Yeah. I'm sure it's gonna be a bust. I just hope this isn't a bust. Yeah. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100. percent But yeah, that that pick, your pick. I, I absolutely agree. Is also it was uh, it was in the race for my number one this week as well. That that was a great issue of that. that that series is great. Everything he's done in that Beyond the White Knight series has been awesome. So there you go, guys. Check out those books. Some great stuff this week that we talked about. Uh, just uh, you know, once once more, make sure you subscribe to the channel, everybody. Uh, you know, suggest this to a friend if you like what we do here. If you like comics, you want to continue the conversation. Hit us up in the comments. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when these drop every week. I think uh, we're consistently trying to put them out on Saturdays, week to week now. Um, I just figured I'd make that the day instead of being Friday or Saturday. So this way, we should always, o almost always, hopefully, have it out on the same day. You know, and unless something happens, you never know, right? Life hits you sometimes. <laughs> so we, yeah. we won't be able to make it on time. But I think if we make it Saturday for the drop, I think uh, we should be pretty good. So... I uh, look forward for these shows Saturday, but if you want to be notified about that, like I said, hit that bell and uh, thanks for tuning in as always. Always a lot of fun to do these and uh, stay tuned. All right, Chris. All right, cheers.